Zombies! Is it the zombie apocalypse? No, but there will be a zombie collapse soon. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Yankee Stacking. Imagine if on a cross-country road trip, you pulled off the interstate and found yourself in a small town of just 1,500 residents. As you get out of the car at the gas station to fill your tank, you suddenly notice zombies walking the streets. 300 of them. 300 walking dead, desperate for a steady diet of government-subsidized brains. And hundreds more in this town just recently got bit, and most likely infected. What would you say the outlook for that town to be? Doomed, right? Well, welcome to the USA. Surprised? You shouldn't be. We have had an infestation of zombie companies for years now, and they can be found right within the S&P 1500 index. Now, you hear a lot about the S&P 500, right? But the S&P 1500 is also very important. By design, that broader S&P 1500 index does not include the smallest, the riskiest, the, the more, you know, more likely to fail public companies. It's the good ones. It's the bigger companies. The ones that are, you know, uh, fiscally strong, right? And you would think many in there would be able to withstand a shock to the American economic system, right? I mean, these are the 1,500 largest public companies in America. So what do you think? <laughs> nope. The S&P 1500 is off 30% year to date. You see, these 300 I spoke of are zombie companies inside the S&P 1500. What is a zombie company, you might be asking. Zombie companies are companies that earn too little even to make interest payments on their debt. Think about that. Forget, forget repaying the debt. They can't even pay the interest on their debt. Their very survival depends on getting new debt. Okay, they, they must continually feast <laughs> on debt brains. Okay, let me ask you, if, if, if your household was, was uh, so in debt on credit cards, that you couldn't afford to pay just the monthly interest on those credit card bills without having to qualify for new credit cards just to pay off the interest with them. I, I Okay, I hope none of you watching are in that predicament, but would you not, uh, unfortunately, consider yourself dead broke, uh, insolvent, hopelessly bankrupt? I would. And, and... And even if, you know, Daddy Warbucks was willing to help you by, you know, stealing money from other people and, and more than that, stealing from other people's children and their future to cover your interest payments for a while. How long would that work? And, and what if the entire town got infected? And what if Daddy Warbucks himself was unable to repay its debt? Sorry if this is a, uh, a grim picture, but it's reality, folks. And it's getting worse, especially into you know, the times that we're in right now. It's, it, a lot of this, though, was in place before the current crisis. Case in point, 20% of U.S. companies were zombie companies just at the end of last year. 30% of Canadian companies were zombie companies, again, before the crisis. And yes, 25% of China's companies were, were also deemed zombies. 
But remember now, the, the Chinese, they had something going for them too. They had savings, they had manufacturing, they had the ability to dump their treasuries, our, our IOUs to them and find other consumers for their goods. But you can see all the zombie companies in place up until this crisis. Guys, the zombie companies doubled over the last 10 years. I can't really wrap my brain, <laughs> no pun intended, around you know the reason why we would put up with this. A crazy paradigm where where, where debt laden companies could never fail. You know, price and earnings had like no correlation. Easy money from the Fed flooded our economy and corporate stock buybacks. They were the ones that drove the US market to all time highs. Wasn't the individual investor that did it? It was the corporations with their buybacks due to cheap money. It's like the markets thought the companies that were in this predicament could never die. And unlike the good old days, when when cash flow, all right, well, that was the lifeblood of companies, all right. And and, and if cash flows you know, didn't keep up with you know your debt payments, you died. You went into bankruptcy. But nope, nope, not today. You know, private traded companies like, you know, WeWork or, or Tesla, Uber, Lyft, you name it. They, they just keep burning cash. And the banks kept lending to them over and over. It was, it's crazy. In fact, did you know that Boeing didn't sell a single plane in January this year? Zero. That, that, that hadn't happened since like 1962. And that was before this medical crisis hit our shores. Before. Yet, you know, Boeing back then, they had absolutely no problem in getting another $12 billion in capital. <laughs> and now, of course, they're, they're going to probably get a massive bailout. Uh, who knows? The, the government might even take them over completely. Frankly, undead companies should die. They're, they're always bad for our economy. They, they draw uh, capital and resources away from healthy companies. That's, you know, maybe as few as there are. Uh, but, but the healthy ones, you know, strong companies that actually generate earnings and uh, <gasps> profits, you know. I'm just, I'm just frustrated, guys, because we had ample warning on this, people. Just and this may be a Yankee rant, and I apologize that it is, but you know, think about it. Just prior to to the dot com collapse of two thousand and the hundreds of bankruptcies that followed, nine percent of the S and P fifteen hundred were zombie companies. All right, two thousand. Just prior to the financial crisis in two thousand and eight, and the hundreds of bankruptcies that that you know followed that, twelve percent of the S and P fifteen hundred were zombie companies. And right now, well, last I checked, I should say, it's 20%. I mean, it, it could be 30%, 40% soon. You know, we saw the threat. Shoot, I think there was a, I, I'm going to put this quote up. Scott Minard, uh, a chairman of Guttenheim Investments. He's also the member of the New York Fed's in, 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 Investor Advisory Committee. So he, he knows what he's talking about, right? He warned about these zombie companies. Again, before this present crisis. He said, and I quote, we are either moving into a completely new paradigm or the speculative energy in the market is completely out of control. I think it's the latter. I have said before that we have entered the silly season, but I stand corrected. We are in the ludicrous season. Ludicrous. <laughs> that was right. In fact, in fact, the chart of corporate debt could be found under dictionary.com's definition of ludicrous. I've shown this before, but but look at the growth of triple B rated or junk rated uh, bonds by companies since the Great Recession. Look at that. We didn't learn any lessons. And if times were ludicrous last year, how about now? I mean, come on. I, I, I just got back from uh, getting some takeout from my uh, local uh, restaurant 
that we frequent. Uh, you know, the whole family loves to go to this particular restaurant. It's the parking lot's empty. You know, I feel bad for her. She's she's doing as best as she can. She's doing takeout. We grab some food from her. I ask her, "How's it going?" Oh, it's not good. It's really bad. And then she thanked me that that we came and and, and bought some some food. I, I, this is like a dystopian reality. All right, it, it, we're we're witnessing this stuff. It, it's shocking, right? You know, deserted airports, uh, empty trains, shuttered restaurants. Uh, you know, signs like this that I got when I went with Mrs. Yankee to, to the supermarket just to pick up a few things. Hmm. Who thought you'd see that posted in your supermarket? Whew. Well, maybe the preppers did. <laughs> this is really bad. And I, and I have to think, how? How can our zombie infestation not, like, spike way up over the next few months? The longer this crisis lasts, the greater the risk that the credit markets will morph into a financial collapse with zombie companies starting a chain of defaults, just, just like the subprime mortgages did back in 2008. And I think even with a bailout of you know, monstrous proportion, or bailouts after bailouts after bailouts, I still think this could, could continue. I still think that the um, cumulative dead weight of all the old and the brand new zombie companies coming into creation now, just got bit, could be enough to collapse the economy, regardless of the bailouts. Oh, now, now some of you are, are probably going, oh, come on, Yankee. <sighs> Give me a break. This is fear mongering. <laughs> what are you against Trump? No, I'm not against Trump at all. I hope he's very successful. And it's not fear mongering. Okay, actually, I'm afraid, frankly, you might be suffering from a bad case of recency bias if you think this is fear mongering. Okay, that recency bias means, you know, either you're thinking things will all work out because it always does work itself out, you know, or, you know, whatever. The, the medical issue, okay, for example. You might be thinking, oh, that's nothing, Yankee. Come on, nothing more than you know, a seasonal illness. We always get that during the winter. Come on. Well, I, I mean, I have heard that. And, and again, I don't want to be sensationalistic here. But if you believe that, then I, I think you don't understand the risk of logarithmic growth. I mean, think about this. Okay, I, I'll get back to the, the monetary piece of this in a moment. But did you know that it took three months for the entire world to reach 100,000 physically affected by this uh, medical crisis. Three months to reach 100,000. Just 12 days later, it reached its second 100,000. And as I record this, which is Sunday, we just topped 300,000 global cases in 96 hours. Think about that. And while you're thinking about that, I have a few questions for you. You know, for you 401k and market watchers, if this medical crisis continues and markets plummet for, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, another uh, 10 to 20% down, let's say, will we see everyone rushing for the door? Market-wise, will everyone rush to the door to get out? And mind you, it's a it's a very small door. I bet few watching this video right now have actually experienced what it's like when your sell order can't be filled. Another question, do you see the danger of pension funds being forced for years into investing with zombie companies? because they have been forced to, to meet their obligations. They've taken greater and greater risk. And do, do you see the danger of supply lines being cut off and manufacturers suspending production? That's a big threat, people. The supply chain, let's pray that does not get interrupted. Another question, do you, do you see the pressure that's building on interest rates to spike? Remember, 
market forces with repos not too long ago were pricing overnight loans at 10%. That was at the end of last year, or, uh, September, I think it was. They wanted 10%. The Fed had to step in big time with QE that wasn't QE at that point. Will the latest flow of liquidity into the system by the Fed be enough to hold those interest rates down? That's a big question. And will all the many trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of currency creation launch stagflation? That's the curse of rising costs during a recession. And finally, will our dollar collapse under the weight of the coming mother of all bailouts? Because we are just going to inflate our dollar to oblivion. I don't know. who, And who knows, right? I, I, I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> I can't see into the future. <laughs> I wish I could, but I can't. But I'm pretty sure that one day we are going to have a day of reckoning. Maybe it's sooner than ever before now. But regardless, I believe that zombies <laughs> will lead the way. Well, thanks again for watching Yankee Stacking. I appreciate uh, this great community. And as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.